Hey everyone, so this video is going to be a little dribble video, um, just about how dribbles are as pets. Um, so I know there's a bit of a glare over there, um, I'm going to try to fix that real quick. So basically today we are going to be talking about gerbils as pets, um, and I know it's probably a bit difficult to see them as the wheel is in the way, uh, but hopefully they will come out and visit. Uh, I see little anesthesias back there right now. Um, so basically as pets, um, this isn't going to be a video about like what you need for them or how to take care of them or anything like that. It's basically just going to be a video on what to expect when you own gerbils. Um, so basically the first thing you should probably expect and the biggest thing is that they are monster chewers. No one told me that they chewed this much. Everyone always said that guinea pigs and hamsters and every rodent and small pet you own chews. Yeah, guinea pigs can destroy a willow tunnel within a few weeks and nibble on a wooden hut, but gerbils will devour a small willow tunnel in maybe 25 minutes. So, the first thing you need to realize is that they will chew everything and anything. Um, so you need very little plastic, and if you do have plastic, like a wheel or something, it needs to be very hard plastic, like a silent spinner or something like that. A wooden wheel, not a good plan. They will destroy that. Wooden food, or um, plastic food bowls, not a good plan. Uh, so basically, um, that is the, probably the biggest thing you should ever know about dribbles is that they chew ridiculous amounts. Um, and so therefore you really don't have to spend a lot of money on toys. Uh, you can get a few really thick wooden toys, some bendy bridges, like maybe different wheels. Uh, but to be honest, the best thing for them is bedding and chew toys. Um, and for chew toys, I just use recyclables. I use egg cartons. Um, there's one in the back of the cage here, if you guys can see that. Um, and I also use um, toilet paper tubes and towel rolls um, tubes as well. Um, and I find that those are really great. They make bedding with it as well as keeps them busy, keeps them entertained, keeps their teeth down. Um, and those are definitely bedding and chew and like cardboard shoes are probably the best and their favorite things. So the next thing that you probably should know is that they, I don't think they're crepuscular diurnal or nocturnal. They're kind of like always awake. Um, they do take naps periodically throughout both the day and the night, um, but to be honest, they're pretty much awake whenever you need them. Um, they're not like hamsters where you have to wait until they're awake and all this stuff. Um, if I open the lid to their cage, they pretty much just wake up and run around and play. Again, they are pretty much always awake and active, so they're really not um, difficult to, like, play with or tame, um, and they're just very, very, uh, generally friendly animals. They're kind of, I think of them, like, as little dogs. Um, they're always happy. Um, they like to be together. They run around, they play, they eat, they jump. They basically do whatever, whenever, and they're always happy to do it. Um, they never need baths. The only baths they get are sand baths, not dust baths, but chinchilla sand baths. Um, or you can use child's play sand. Um, those are definitely things you'll need. Um, they can be loud at night if you give them something to chew right before bed. Um, so for people with light sleeping patterns, you probably shouldn't give them a lot of chew toys right before bed, but um, they are generally very quiet, especially with the silent spinner. Um, the wheel definitely plays a big part in it um, and how quiet they are, but uh, to me, honestly, I'm so used to hearing them um, and that it actually lulls me to sleep. It doesn't wake me up ever. The first few weeks I had them, it took me a while to adjust, but honestly, after that, it's really great. Um, they are very fast creatures. Everyone on YouTube always is amazed at how fast they are. Um, and my dribbles are significantly slower than they were when I first got them. When you first get them, they are going to be speedy. They are not going to want to be held. Uh, they probably won't stop long enough to eat in your hand, um, so that's going to take time, but out of uh, my guinea pigs, hamster, and gerbils, the gerbils were definitely the easiest to tame. They, I don't know a single gerbil who was ever bitten. I know lots of people who have owned gerbils, and no one has ever said they've bitten. So they're generally very, very good-willed. Um, uh, Handling-wise, just never hold their tails and you'll be fine. Um, they're very delicate, but as long as you're careful with them, they're easy. Um, you get used to holding them very quickly. Um, 
So that's just basically their like personality and how they act. They are always very, very busy. They're building nests. They're digging. They're um, they burrow their food bowls. If you guys don't know that, they will burrow. They will bury everything. So if you have a food bowl, just know where it is because you probably won't be able to see it. Um, and you should check it every day. Um, again, they are desert animals, so they don't drink very much water. My gerbils maybe drink four ounces a week, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't refill their water bottle often to make and check on it to make sure that it's not leaking. Um, but they're generally very, very good natured. Um, a little bit about gerbil socialization with each other um, is that you should never have one. You should always have two um, is ideal. Three is okay, but um, every gerbil you add is a higher chance of declanning, which is basically when the like bonded group falls out. Uh, so if you have a very large cage and multiple, like a, a small colony of gerbils, uh, they will more than likely form two or three like clans and then fight against each other. So if you can get two, that's great. But if there are only three, um, please take all three home because they can really, it's very, very, very difficult to bond um, a gerbil with um, anything other than a litter mate. So all three of my gerbils are sisters. They're all litter mates. Um, and if I only got two of them, then one of them would pretty much never have a friend. Um, cage size, you want to make sure you have enough room for them. Um, people say five gallons of gerbil, but that's a blatant lie. I don't believe in that. Um, that's like the RSPCA minimum, I think, but that's stupid. I have a 10 gallon aquarium and there is no way that I am fitting a wheel and a f substrate burrowing stuff, chew toys, and like hides and stuff for them in a 10 gallon tank. It's You can fit anything in a 10 gallon tank. Like those are useless unless they're for fish. And even then that's pushing it. Um, so I think a 20 gallon long for two or three gerbils is fine. Um, also a little background about gerbils is they're from the Mongolian desert. They live three to four years. So they live in between the lifespan of a hamster and a guinea pig. Um, and a few own those huts as well. So they live three to four years on average, and they often have very few medical issues. The biggest issue with them tends to be um, allergies. Uh, with all of the bedding that they have, they burrow a lot, they move it around a lot. You will get dust all over the top of your aquarium lid. Um, you will find it everywhere. Um, I have to dust off their lid like every day. Um, on the topic of vets, you should also have a vet on uh, file and have have talked to them. Uh, you don't need to bring them in for like well visits or anything. I don't think that's necessary uh, because it's very obvious when they're on well. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And you need to keep them between like 68 and 72 degrees. So if you're like can only keep animals outside, then they're not for you because they will freeze. Um, and yeah, so now I'm just going to show you guys me holding them and how tame gerbils get, because that is going to be the second part of this video, is just how tame gerbils get. Now, by any means, I'm not saying that my gerbils are the most tame. They don't know their names um, very well. They they don't know their names. They don't have any tricks. Though gerbils are very smart and can perform these tricks, um, they're my gerbils don't. I just don't work with them with tricks or anything. Um, so I'm just going to handle them and show you guys what they are like when you handle them and how gerbils are going to behave once they are tame. Alright guys, so I'm going to get one of the gerbils real quick. So this is Miss Matilda. I literally just opened the tank and picked her up. Um, I should probably show you how to do that, but I'm probably not going to. Um, and this is just how you handle them when they're very tame. They're significantly slower the longer you own them. Um, and it probably took two, three, maybe a month to completely tame them. Uh, they are sweethearts. You can put them on your shoulder, have them sit up there all day if you want. Um, but they aren't going to just sit still and let you pet them. Like They're not overly fun to pet. They're very small. Um, and these are girls, by the way. Males are significantly larger. I actually thought that my gerbils had like a birth defect or were too small or weren't full grown um, when I first got them because I had only seen male gerbils and mine were female and they're very small. Uh, this is Matilda. If you guys don't know, she is my black spotted female. Uh, she's the eldest of the three, I believe. Um, that's just what I have a hunch about. Uh, she's the boss girl. And this is just how big they are, what they look like. Um, again, you never want to touch their tails. Like, you can touch them, but um, don't, like, pull them ever. Or they'll basically fall off, and it's really gross. But this is just how they act. Um, when they get really grumpy about being held, they will start 
burrowing and scratching through your fingers trying to get out. Um, and when they start doing that, just put them back. You don't need to bother them or anything like that or make them angry. Um, so she's starting to dig. Um, so I'm just going to put her back and grab another one and show you all of my three little girls. Alright, so this is Natalia, who I believe is the second oldest. She is uh, my, I think it's called a sable, uh, not a Himalayan, but a sable uh, gerbil. She is my female, and I believe she's the second oldest. Uh, she has a brown nose and a purely brown tail, and she's being, feeling very feisty today, as you guys can see. Um, she's usually much slower than this. Um, but they're very soft. They have fur and not hair, unlike guinea pigs. Um, and they're very funny. I'll just show you guys... Um, they will literally just sit on your shoulders. Um, they'll crawl down your back, crawl up your arms, uh, everything like that. So if you're wearing long sleeves like I am, and you put your hand in that cage, more than likely they are going to jump up your arms and crawl onto your shoulders. So she's going very quickly today, um, and this is just what sometimes they act like. Um, they don't always wait for your hand to get there, so please be ready. They have very bad depth perception as well, uh, so if you put them on a high surface, they will most likely just jump off. They don't really see overly well. Um, they do smell very well, though. Um, so just a quick little tip, if you take one of the, if one gerbil has to go to the vet, you should bring the entire, what, its sibling or the other siblings, um, because if they are separated from their siblings too long, they actually won't recognize the gerbil that was taken out when they get home because it'll smell so differently, and then they might not accept it back. So this is Miss Natalia. So I'm actually going to show you guys how I pick up the gerbils really quick before I get Miss Anastasia. Alright guys, I'm just going to show you guys how I pick them up. So, well, Anastasia ran away, so basically you just scoop them like that and pick them up. That's literally it. You can use the claw method. Um, once you get them really tame, they really don't mind it. Uh, but I like to scoop like that and just use two hands and cut from underneath. So scoop just like that and then you let them down and um, when you're first taming them you should really just practice scooping and picking them up a lot and get them used to that so now I'm just going to show you anesthesia talk a little bit more about gerbils blab a little bit um, and hopefully edit this video down a little bit more guys, so this is Anastasia. She's the baby of the bunch. She is my molted dove. She has a black tail with a white tip similar to Matilda's. Uh, she's my shyest. She doesn't eat in my hands. So it, your gerbils may not eat in your hands when you're first taming. Um, but this is, again, just a video to show you guys how they act, what to expect when you own them, and if they're the right pet for you. So again, they are not cuddly animals by any means. They will sit here, slowly walk in between your hands, and that's about as cluttery as they get. Uh, pretty much all the other time they are just walking around your hands. Anastasia is my slowest and my shyest, so she's a lot more quiet and relaxed. Um, but they pretty much do that. Uh, they're very sweet. They're very small, so you have to get used to handling them, and you have to be careful that they have a grip on things. Um, but that's just basically how gerbils are. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like up and share uh, if you think that other people are going to find this useful. Just spread it around if you think you found it useful or just cute because they are absolutely adorable. I think they're adorable. Look at her. Say hello. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so, so much. I'll take any comments or if you guys have any requests about the gerbils that you'd like to see or any information that you'd like to know, you can also leave that down below and comment, like, subscribe, and thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I hope you guys got to um, enjoy seeing the triplet a little bit more because I don't get to show them overly much uh, due to the poor lighting we have in New York. So thank you guys so, so much for watching again uh, and bearing with me. So have a great day, everyone.